and hello everyone welcome back to another flask tutorial so in this tutorial we will be taking a look at creating our very first flask project so before we get into anything you will need to know flask in order to follow along i have an entire course on flask and you just need to know the basics i will pretty much explain everything else then here you also want to know maybe a little bit of html it's not required if you don't know any html it's still perfectly fine because we're going to skip kind of over most of the html stuff but knowing a little bit is always good for you finally if you need the source code for any of our tutorials this is my repository where i've put all of my youtube projects you can just go to python and the link for this will be in the description flask and then it will take you into tour friends and here is the code for each and every lesson and afterwards there's also homework and stuff you can do if you want to improve on what you've done cool so let's take a look at the website we'll be building and for everyone to just know especially for you youtube this concept can be used for something else other than torrenting YouTube loves to demonetize people whenever they even think about saying the word torrent. We are just going to use this as an example. There's nothing illegal about this. This website will not even host any real torrents. This is just my very first website that I built for me and my friends to use to share files with each other. So it's going to be a file sharing website. So please YouTube, this is for educational purposes and teaching how to use Flask. Please do not demonetize me. Next up, let's actually take a look through the website. So you'll notice here, we actually have guest sessions, which is pretty neat. And in here we have a few basic torrents or links. And here you can see, if we look at the descriptions, we get a name, which is my trash folders which is for testing purposes size is 12 kilobytes the type is other or none you can get different types such as video movie and then you have your description and then the person who uploaded this in this case netsu then you also have a rules page which will show you all of the rules and then a sign in you can sign into a user that already exists such as netsu or you can create your own user by going to no account so Netsu, and then your password, login. Cool. So now we are logged in as Netsu, who is an administrator. Now we can also go to our account, see the torrents we have uploaded, delete our account, change our password or username. We can also add another torrent, where we can give it the full name. And we can give it display names, magnet links, file sizes, and say what type and in video sizes and description we can also go to our admin pages we can add a user we can edit a user we can remove a user if we edit a user we can go to like username and you might see this a little bit i just need to tweak it some of these routes are very direct so you just have to add a slash at the end and you can give their their current username their new username and then you can change and then you can just put your password in this is just an example you generally don't want to change someone's username even if you're an admin you don't want to do that but you can and you can also add users remove them and then of course you just have your rules and you can log out so bloop now you're logged out so that is the basics of what we'll be doing we'll be showing you how to create and make all of this work we'll create it and make it work cool now that we have that basic idea underway let's create our first flask app don't mind this run.sh here, it's just so I can have an easier time running this. I can just run this file and it will run the code for me. If you're on Windows, you cannot use .sh files, but you can use other types of files like bash files. Or batch files, I mean. Now we can create a folder called Tor Friends. And this is where our code is going to go. But first we need to make sure we have a virtual environment. This is an optional step. You do not have to do this, 
But having a virtual environment means if you have multiple projects that uses Python, but different versions of modules, so one might use Flask 2.0, while the other one might use Flask 2.5, then you don't have to worry about the one project clashing with the other project because they're using different versions of Flask. Each of one, each one of them can have their own virtual environment. To do use that, you can just go Python dash m venv venv. That should work. Otherwise, you can just give a quick Google on how to create a virtual environment in Python. I usually use virtual env venv. Then here is our virtual environment. You can just use source venv bin activate and that will activate this virtual environment for you. So now we're in this virtual environment. If we install a module, it will install it into this virtual environment and not to our PC, which is much better. And now I can just go pip install flask. While we wait for that, we can go here and create a new file init.py. And in here, we can just say from flask, import flask. Then you can create a basic flask app. And you can just say test env is equal to true. So if we're just doing some testing, if it's not in a real environment, so where we're not doing like legitimate stuff, then this is the best way to go. Just a test environment. Uh, this is an optional step, but I recommend it, especially if you want to create your own thing and then publish it. This will allow you to keep production where it's online and other people can use it, separate from being yours that you just test. We can then go if env, then app.secret key is equal to testing key. So then you have a secret key and you know what it is. So it's just for testing stuff. And you can also just print out using testing environment. And then finally, we can say app.url map.strict slashes, and we can make that false. So that issue where we, what we had before where we have strict slashes required. So if you don't have a slash at the end of a link, it doesn't work. This will make sure that doesn't happen. So we're removing the strictness from those slashes. And then let's just create a dummy route. And we say define hello. And then return hello world. There we go. So we all know this is a very basic Flask app. And that's all it is. Now our things has been installed. So now we can just say dot slash run or ch plus x and then run. Now this run, as I said before, it just uses this right here. So it just exports these two variables for me and then it does flask run. That's all it does. So let's run it. And now I can see using testing environment. And if we go here, then we get hello world. Once we have that, we're done with the first part of our tutorial. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you all again in the next tutorial.